Okay, so welcome to the DevOps speakey, Speakeasy at DevOps Morocco. My name is Steven Chin. I'm VP of Developer Relations at JFrog, and I am joined here by Marcus Schlichting. Yeah, Schlichting. Yeah, right. Schlichting. <laughs> Schlichting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right. very good to to meet you and um, to um, chat a bit here at the DevOps Morocco conference. So first, for folks who who don't know about DevOps Morocco, can you tell us a little bit about what your experience is here coming from to Morocco? Uh, it's a great experience. It's a great venue. It's uh, really beautiful with the sunshine and the pools outside <laughs> and sitting there. <laughs> and also doing the sessions, it's a great experience because the crowd here is so friendly and so open-minded, asking questions, ready for discussions. It's really a great conference. Yeah, I just did the keynote and then like lots of really detailed questions. Even one of the one of the guys here was in university working on a security project, which was related to what I was talking about. So I think like like the the technical level of the attendees and the engagement is really really awesome. Absolutely yes. So um, speaking of talks, you're gonna be giving a talk tomorrow. Yeah. And tomorrow. Wha what's your talk on? Tomorrow is my talk about Dino Fresh, another web framework that promises to be the choice for the next generation. Um, it's more like a web framework in the sense of Grails or Rails or um, the classical ones where you do server side rendering, send that to the client and ex the client part a little bit with JavaScript, not as much as the SPAs did with React and Angular. And as this pendulum is swinging back, my talk attempts to answer the question if it's worth to look into it or if it's just a gaming puzzle for some guy, <laughs> for some geeks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's uh, what I will be looking into. Cool, cool. And I, I assume like you, you've been using the framework a lot to do your, like to, I to experiment and right, research right. And, uh, and figure out if it can work. Um, do you have any projects which you're thinking of applying it to? Any? Um not yet, not yet. I think it's uh, it's a good start. It's a really interesting project, but uh, the ec uh, the ecosystem has to build up, and it has to build up a community. And it's not there yet for me to actually push it into a client project and say, see, bet on this, because mm -hmm. for client projects, you always have to consider that once you go into production, it will be there for 10 years probably, yeah, and exactly. then you have to maintain it. And I think it's not quite in that state. For smaller project, for pet project, I go with it. It's fun. Okay, and yeah. like, like, what's the big um, advantage of using um, Dino over like a Node.js application? Dino is a uh, single executable, so it's really easy to install it, to update it, to handle it. Um, Dino uh, quits with the messed up package.json. It's oh. the dependency management. It's nice. just directly using URLs. It's, of course, caching them, so it's not requesting the dependencies every time mm -hmm. they are used. It's caching them, um, but globally, so you don't have a, a node modules folder or something similar with every project. It's um, on your machine, it's for all projects shared, which is great. You, of course, can trigger a refetch if needed. And for deploying it somewhere, you just bundle what you need. And then in production, it will not fetch anything from anywhere. You bundle it. OK, in so a you, just you have a full bundle, all the dependencies, everything you need is an application. Yeah. And then it's easy to deploy. Yeah. Sounds like it's easier to right. manage dependencies if you have conflicting libraries or other things running on the same. You, you have your application has its own libraries bundled. Right, right. Another good point is that it bundles the TypeScript. So you don't have that separate step when building or bundling. It's just built in. It gives a little bit away from its performance to do that, but it's OK. It's still pleasing fast. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's implemented in Rust. And so it seems to be, or for me, some, some of the performance comes from that implementation. Maybe. OK, yeah, so also high performance implementation. Have you done any performance comparisons of like your applications or like seen a good analysis of the performance versus? Um, yeah, most of the analysis I have seen, it's in the end, it's equal with Node. So okay. it, it just from the feeling, it feels faster because you don't have that build step. Mm -hmm. And um, for the developer experience, that's, that's already great. For production comparisons, it's about the same, but you get more. You get that uh, TypeScript built in. You get, that, uh, you get out of that dependency hell. So that's uh, a good combination. Okay. No, I mean, it sounds like an exciting framework for folks to try. Um, any any good resource? Like, where would you recommend folks start if they want to find out more about, the like? There is a compilation of articles on Medium. Mm -hmm. the, they concentrate on the Fresh Framework. They, they are a good start. There are some nice YouTube videos. Um, and 
of course, the, the fresh home page itself. It has some examples. Looking into the code is for me always the first start and actually may build up my own picture. Yeah. And that's, um, that's really enlightening to see what, what has been there. And there are quite some interesting examples. It's not just the Hello World. They have a shop, they have a blog, they have uh, some sort of uh, little project management thingy um, as examples. And that's good to Cool. Learn. No, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to your talk tomorrow. That sounds like it's going to be awesome. Um, so any, like, like y this is, um, is this your first international conference coming to DevOps Morocco or have you done any other big conferences recently? Yeah, I've been to DevOps Morocco before, actually. Uh, I've been but but post-COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> post-COVID, it's the first international conference, yeah. Oh, it's nice, like yeah, nice. Actually. Okay, it's yeah, not absolutely. a bad choice. So, no, definitely not. And uh, it was a little bit weird to get on a plane after such a long time. <laughs> and um, But it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth to get in touch with all the people and it's so much easier than via screen. It's yeah, no, I, I think the, the big difference for me is the engagement yeah. with people. So I gave a, a lot of virtual conferences, like at meetups, at conferences, um, keynotes, and the you can give really good content, and the audience can be quite large online. But then you just you just don't have those interactions with folks where you can really have yeah. um, like deeper discussions. They can they right. can ask one on one questions. Right. Um, that's as a exactly what I was struggling with. You don't get any feedback from a Zoom call. That's like you have time for questions, and if you are lucky, that come one or two questions drop in, but there is no follow-up on those questions or answers you give, then it's fine and it's quiet and then you log out and, <laughs> down and well, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think this is really exciting that we're back in, in person. So yeah. thanks so much for the interview, Marcus. Thank you, Steve. Joining us on the DevOps Speakeasy. So you can join us for the rest of the interviews at the DevOps Speakeasy Twitter handle. And we're very excited to be back in person at the DevOx Morocco conference in Agadir, Morocco. Right. Thank you. Thanks so for having me. Thank you.